One of the problems I face as an artist and small business owner is feeling overwhelmed by the endless amount of tasks that I have to do. There are many planning systems out there that offer so much organization, so many tables, checklists and pages, and I get overwhelmed by those as well. So today I'm going to show you how I organize my work and life in a very simple way using Notion and my planner Hobonichi Weeks. Hello friends, my name is Sai and I'm an illustrator based in Japan. As as part of my work, I make art, run my online shop, my Patreon, my YouTube channel, my social media, and also try to live my life as a normal human being outside of all that. I've tried lots of different planning systems over the years, but what works for me right now is something that is very simple that I can quickly get an overview of what I have to do each day and get to work. As to why I'm using a combination of Notion and Hobonichi Weeks, I am an analog person at heart. I love my papers, my pens, my stickers and washi tapes. I also like being able to keep my Hobonichi open on my desk at all times. So with this hybrid system, I can utilize the function functionality and ease of Notion and also enjoy the physical aspect of my Hobonichi weeks. Having said that, this system can work fully on Notion. There's no one size fits all when it comes to planning. The key is to find a system that works for yourself and remember that you can always tweak it to suit your own needs. So this is the very first page of my planner and it's the yearly view. As you can see, it is very minimal. This header image is from an illustration I drew in January for the new rabbit year and it comes with the message, be gentle with yourself. I think it's a nice reminder to have here because sometimes with planning and goal setting, I can really go overboard with trying to achieve all the things and then being hard on myself. So for me, this is a reminder to not expect perfection from myself. And by the way, I will have this template available for download and we will talk about that later in the video. Okay, so in this main page, you can see that we have three columns. The first one is a monthly planner section, which we'll go into later. The next two columns are work goals and personal goals. Having them here in the yearly view helps to remind me of what's important and keep track of my progress throughout the year. A couple of years ago, I read an advice that it's better to have quantifiable goals that you can measure and track. For example, instead of a goal like exercise more this year, something like complete a 30 days yoga challenge is measurable and you will know exactly when you can tick this off your list. So after hearing that advice, for the past two years, I have been setting goals based on numbers, like how much revenue I want to make each year or how much I want my social media to grow. But over time, I found that to be a lot of pressure and not very much joy. So this year, I'm going to approach the idea of quantifiable goals differently. I'm going to set goals that are more about actions rather than numbers. So what do I mean by that? In terms of work, I'll be setting goals on what types of products I want to make this year or what new projects I want to try. For personal goals, instead of deciding how many books I want to read in a year, I'm just going to list down a few books that I definitely want to read this year. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many books you read. I always think it's quality over quantity and I want to take this approach and apply it to all of my goals this year. That way I can make sure I'm spending time on things that matter the most to me, that make me happy and aligned with my values, rather than just getting lost in doing things just for the sake of hitting a number. I also think it's better to set yourself up to win. So for me, that means setting goals that are achievable and it doesn't matter if it's too easy because you can always increase the goals later on if you want to. Personally, I also don't like setting habit goals like exercising three days a week because I already know that there will be weeks where I'm too busy for that. I know things like habit trackers work well for a lot of people, but they, they kind of demotivate me in that way. And that's okay. It's just about knowing what works best for you and what motivates you to work towards your goals. So now we'll go into the monthly view. This page is also very simple and it has two columns. Let's look at the right column first. 
At the very top, I have a weather forecast and I find this useful for planning days where I want to take videos, take photos of my products, or even just when I want to do the laundry. This is a widget from Action.co and you can sign up and create up to three widgets for free. I like this weather widget because you can customize the colors of the icons and fonts. I've made mine very minimal with just two or three colors. Right below that, we have a calendar. This is where I can note down all my meetings, deadlines, appointments, and so on. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now on the left is where I do my planning. At the very top of each month, I have a focus section where I'll list three things that I want to focus on this month. This can be a deadline or maybe a goal that I want to move forward. It's here to remind myself of the important tasks so that again, I don't lose myself in doing endless small tasks. This section is a weekly planner and this is where I spend the most of my time. We'll click add a new week to create a weekly view and it's a template that I've already set up. My weekly setup here is pretty simple because I don't divide my task into days. I do that in my Hobonichi weeks, which I'll show you later. When it comes to planning one week's tasks, I try to be realistic with how many things I can actually achieve in a week. This is always going to be a learning process for me, but it is something that I try to keep in mind just not to overwhelm myself. Each week is divided into three sections, work, personal, and pending. Pending is a task that is blocked by external factors. For example, waiting for an email reply or waiting for a package to arrive. Once the task is unblocked, I'll move it into the other sections. Finally, down at the very bottom, we have a notes section. You can use this in any way you want. I use it to jot down ideas. Sometimes I paste important information from an email or an article. I write meeting notes or even write small email drafts in here. And that's it for my Notion setup. As you can see, it is very simple. If you like this template, I have this up for sale in my shop. So feel free to check out the link in the description below. I've created a series of 13 cute headers for you. There's one for the yearly page and then one illustration for each month. So when you purchase the pack, you will get access to all the header images as well as a link to my template. You're free to edit the template to match your own personal needs. For example, if you prefer the weekly view to be split into days, you can do that very easily. And I'll include instructions on how to do that in the package. If you already have your own Notion system going on, that's totally okay too. You can use these header images really for any page on Notion or any other apps as long as it's for your own personal use. So now that I've shown you my Notion setup, I'll show you how my Hobonichi weeks fit into the picture. This planner is a weekly setup with the days of the week on the left and a free space on the right. At the beginning of the week, I will refer to my calendar on Notion and then I'll write down any appointments that I have that week. Then I'll refer to the tasks. And this is where on each day I might break down a task into smaller steps. I might also put any small tasks in here that pop up during the day. In that case, I might not bother to put it into Notion if it can just get done in a day. When it comes to daily tasks, I don't really plan ahead all the days in advance. I kind of take each day as they come. Of course, if there's a deadline, then I would have to prioritize that. But otherwise, I'll decide what to do based on my energy level or what I feel like doing that day. If you watched my previous video, I'm trying to be more in tune with myself and kind of work more intuitively rather than forcing things to happen. I just find that to be a more enjoyable way to work recently. The right section I use for scribbles and notes. It's pretty much similar to the notes section that I have on Notion, but I'll use this one if it's something that I would prefer to write down with a pen, for example, an idea that I want to scribble down. Or sometimes I'll use this when I'm out and I don't want to use my phone or iPad. But if it's important notes that I want to document for later, then I'll either put it at the very back of weeks, um, there's a proper notes section there, or I'll create a page for it specifically on Notion. So recently I've been learning to use a new app so I've been writing down shortcuts here at the back of my weeks and even though I said that I love my stationery and all that stuff, I don't pressure myself when it comes to decorating my planner. I only decorate when I feel like it but it's not a must 
So some pages are decorated, some are not. Some days I'm even too busy to use weeks at all. Sometimes I'm, I'm even too busy to use Notion and that's okay. Like I said earlier in the video, just be gentle with yourself and don't expect perfection even when it comes to planning. So that's my planner setup. I hope you found this video to be helpful. There's actually more in my whole planner and journaling system, like my travel journal or apps that I use for memory keeping, etc. I also use Notion for other things like organizing my book notes and planning for my YouTube videos. So let me know if you're interested in this kind of topic and maybe I can make more videos about those things. Let me know what kind of system you're using for planning your work and life. Thank you to Notion for sponsoring this video and that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye!